in too deep. This is the In Too Deep Radio Show with your host, Deeper One, where we discuss driving excellence, evolution, power, and energy refined into one mind, body, and soul. Yo, what's good, family? This is Deeper One. This is the In Too Deep Show. We're doing the show today. Strictly video. Coming to y'all in video. Listen, I've been I've been trying some new software. And I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to be trying some different things. You gotta evolve. You gotta evolve. So we we are we are evolving today. Big time. So y'all get to watch me grow and evolve to something big, bigger than what we started. Let's get into the topic. Let's get into the topic. Oh, it has been, it's been a sensational last couple weeks. If y'all ain't checking me out on social media, you need to go do that. You need to go do that. Okay, go do it. Go check me out. Go check out some of the posts that um, that I've been posting as of late. And I've been posting lately and been going on lives, really getting into some sensitive yet controversial topics that really kind of get people in their feelings, stir people up. And it's for good reason. It's for good reason because today, Everything's just all, it's upside down. It's like Stranger Things. It's like, this world today is like up down, right? It's like up down world. Everything seems to be backwards. And what really is happening right now, and it's been happening for some time, but it's really coming to head, is women are starting to get reality checks. And thanks to a few men out here online, like Kevin Samuels and a couple others, who are opening the eyes of women, more women are now having their eyes open to some realities that that us as men, us as men, we we done known for a minute, but we've been too afraid to speak on it because one of the main reasons, there's two reasons, mainly response. We know we're going to get a visceral response and it's not going to be good. Okay. So we we just would rather shut our mouths. Now, on top of that, let's add cancel culture into there. Because now when you say things that people don't like, they want to cancel you. You say or do things they don't like, they want to cancel you. And, And this is an emotional reaction to things in general. And cancel culture... And visceral reactions have stopped men really from speaking their mind. Well, in 2021, more men are speaking up. More men are speaking up. But what's also beautiful is that more women are hearing the message. In addition to more women are understanding. And that, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. What I want to get into today is I want to do commentary on a video from uh, the guys Fresh and Fit. And they have a show on YouTube called Fresh and Fit After Hours. And the part that's really been really hot this last week since this went up is the end, towards the end when Kevin Samuels comes on and he pretty much rips this, this feminist a new one. And the reason that I wanted to talk about this Understand you. There's a lot of commentary videos on this this segment. There is a lot of reaction videos on this segment. And what I wanted to go through is talk about each point that gets made in this video to help you as ladies to understand kind of your own point of view and, and where it may not be in your best interest, but also understand 
what men are dealing with out here dating and dealing with with women and why some men go red pill why some men go MGTOW and this interaction between these two people is a direct exact iteration and reasoning behind why you've got angry men and men going their own way and, and doing the red pill thing now I'm gonna get into another viewer video at another time to talk about what red pill is what MGTOW is it's just you know it's gonna to be too much to cover in this let's watch this video let's get into the commentary let's go I'm doing the most right now. Bear patience with me, y'all. I'm, I'm working with some new software. And uh, we're we just getting to know it. We're just getting to know it. Let's go. So, <laughs> the ladies are in the middle. Her name is Sable. Oh, before I continue, fair use, fair use. Right. Amanda, but close enough. Amanda, uh, the one, the woman to her right, your name is? Adriana. Adriana, and the woman to your left? Janina. Janina. Okay, one of the things I kept hearing, my name is Kevin Samuels, by the way, nice to meet you. One of the things I kept hearing is the notion of fairness, fairness, fairness. Why? Now, I want you to hear... I want y'all to pay attention, okay? Hold on, my mouse. <laughs> Patience with me, y'all, I'm learning. All right. I want y'all to pay attention to how he comes on, how cool, calm, and collective he is, and how he introduces himself. Now, this show was three hours long, so we're coming in at, I think, two hours and 30-something minutes, all right? So, if you want to hear how things transpired with this group before Kevin came on and how the young lady we're about to hear speak is, go back and watch. Go back and watch the video. And you'll, you'll see more of her wonderful personality that we, as men, deal with on a weekly basis. Here we go. Why is that so important to you, Amanda? I hate to admit it, but I do. Like, I'm half a man. I'm just a pretty girl. And I don't think that I should have to accept less in life because I was born with different equipment. I think that's bullshit. Okay. Now, you hear what she says. She says she is half a man. She says she's half a man. Now... I want y'all to remember this through the rest of this video, okay? And I want you to remember the hypocrisy and the irony of everything else that she is going to say after this point. Because remember, she is half a man. Well, if you're half a man, then you should understand this full concept that men don't care about. Fair food. use, fair use. I don't have to care about fair either. You no, no, no. I mean? Men don't care about fair or else we wouldn't conquer other people. Now, we're talking about fairness. And one of the biggest arguments that women throw around is fairness. What's fair? What isn't? Another one is double standard. Double standard what isn't double standard, generally really quick to call out what's unfair and what is a double standard. Fair use, fair use. You're of European descent. Looks like you're from, you look like you're from, the, your people are from the Caucasus Mountains, European descent. So I, am most, very well, white. Uh, huh? I am very white, yes. That's fine. And some of them, and there's a lot, and between a lot of warring tribes, Germania, the Franks, if we cared about fairness, we would just let everybody stay on their land. Vikings wouldn't have raved and pillaged. England would have stayed on its island. Scotland would have been all right. Ireland would have been all right. 
So the point that he's getting at here is that if everything, if the world was fair, we wouldn't actually be here today. No telling what the world would be, no telling those of you that live in the United States, would there even have been a United States? We, we could have been born somewhere else, let alone not born at all. Unfair actions has helped us get to where we are today. Let's continue. Fair use, fair use. All right. Matter of fact, Hong Kong wouldn't have been a, a British protectorate for how many years? Oh, until the last, what, 30 or 40? Men don't care about fair. We conquer. It's winners and losers. Straight up. Right? Now, you hear what he said? There are winners and losers. All right? Now, understand, she's going to pretend that she doesn't understand the concept or ideology behind behind there being winners and losers, all right? She's gonna act like she doesn't. Now look at her, she's very attractive. So we know that she knows that. Because let's be honest, women that are attractive like that generally get pretty privileged. And we gonna get into pretty privileged with her in a minute. Let's go. Fair use, fair use. You're half a man. I didn't know that only men were part of conquering. Well, name me, name me some great female warriors that have dominated the planet. Well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm learning new education here, which is only men conquer. No. I, I mean, that's what you're telling me, right? No. Well, see, what I'm not going to do, I'm not going to switch that. I, I'm asking about fairness. And I said about fairness. Why? Okay. All right. Now, let, let's talk about for a little bit second her response, okay? She's already coming off condescending. This is a typical response to a conversation of this caliber. I've been in these conversations before. I've, I've dealt with this. Now, understand, I don't think she realized who she's talking to. And, and a lot of this goes on. Even this morning, I had a back and forth with somebody online who was speaking similarly to this. Now, I'm like him, I'm very direct. And I'm not going to tolerate no BS, but this is a lot of what happens. Now, what's beautiful about when we watch this is that she's there and they're speaking verbally to one another. I generally have to deal with this online with people who are hiding behind uh, private profiles, uh, no profile pics, and they're just, they're just typing away, angry as hell, responding emotionally and not responding with any type of emotional intelligence or maturity or facts. It's all feelings. What killed me is this one that I was arguing this morning was about bullying and I was being accused of bullying on this particular post that I made. So I took it upon myself because I know how these interactions go. So I took it upon myself to go to stopbullying.gov and I copy and pasted what bullying was based on a government's definition of bullying on their website. Okay, I laid, it, I laid it out to her flat, in addition to a dictionary meaning, okay? And she still found ways to try to argue her feelings. That's a lot of what these arguments tend to be like. Let's continue to listen. Fair use, fair use. Why is fairness so important? You said because you're half a man. Because if you expect something of me, I should be allowed to expect the same of you. And if you can't offer me that, you don't deserve to be in my life. But that has nothing to do with fairness. It has everything to do with fairness. No, fairness means you get an opportunity. Fairness doesn't mean you get an outcome. All right. Now, do you hear what she said? It sounded a little bit entitled, didn't it? Didn't it? it sound very entitled. Fairness is the opportunity to try, not the right to get the outcome. A lot of people get this confused. There are a lot of things that aren't fair for men and for women, 
for, for many different reasons. For black, for white, a lot of things that aren't fair. But what we're going to find out and what we're going to see is I'm going to show you. It's one thing to tell you all this. It's one thing to tell you this, but it's another to show you. I'm going to show you what a lot of women think. And a lot, a lot of women think and say this verbatim almost with this young lady. Let's go. Oh, my God. <laughs> you get an interview, not guaranteed a job. No, you're not, but I work very, very hard to ensure that I keep it. Well, if that's the case, you should, if, that, if, if that's the case, thing, right? if that's the case, then if that's the case, you should be able to secure the things you want. So you should have no problem. Obviously not. Not when men are out here believing like you don't have to be fair. Well, those two things can't exist in the same place. Women haven't even been part of human history. It's just men and all we care about is conquer. Well, no, no, no. You just said. You work very hard, so you should get the outcomes. See, if hard work was all that required, then we would almost be guaranteed. Hard work gets you a ticket to the dance. It doesn't get, guarantee you the top spot. Now look at her facial expression. Look at her facial expression. Now she she's sitting here thinking like she's really doing something. All right. She's really thinking she's doing something. And y'all got to understand, she's arguing what she feels. Okay. If you're going to argue with me with what you feel, you've already lost the argument. Because I'm not arguing feelings and emotions with you, and he's not arguing feelings and emotions with her. He's telling her facts. He's telling her facts. Look at her face. She, she's not even trying to listen or, or trying to understand. Okay. You, you can see the how condescending even her facial expressions are. This is <laughs> this is what we deal with. This is what we we deal with. Let's continue. Fair use. Fair use. How many uh who who lost the Super Bowl, guys? The uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Can you say they worked hard this year? Very hard. Number two. Men don't worry about fairness. We worry about winning. And to the victor go the spoils. Just like, you know what? How many times you've gotten to a club into VIP for free when some ugly chicks had to pay full price? Okay. Okay. I love this example. I love this example. And I love this example because it's a prime example. And it... There's no other example clearer than this example when we talk about privilege and pretty privilege. Now, we're going to listen and we're going to get deeper into it in a second. But ladies, I want you to understand, especially those of you who may not be as attractive. Okay. And I want you to understand how self-serving the feminist attitude is. Okay. And I want you to listen to her response about the nightclub and pay attention this wasn't meant this movement and this attitude isn't meant to benefit everyone and it becomes abundantly clear very quickly let's finish fair use fair use is that my fault Oh. No, no, no. I've asked how many times it happened before you go down that path. I mean, it, plenty of times in Miami. Exactly, but that's not fair, is it? Well, please don't forget I'm not from here. But so. that's not the point, ma'am. That's yeah. not fair, is it? I also don't care about those things. But, oh, so you only care about fairness when it when it doesn't benefit you. All right. <laughs> Let me... My man's hit it. These are conversations that I have at least once a week with somebody. only care about fairness when it benefits them. One of the worst things that you can do in a conversation is ask a question. It's when somebody asks you a question and you answer with a question. And you try to divert away from the question. When I receive this in an argument, 
in my mind, I've won. I've won. And if I continue on with you at this point, it's, it's for shits and giggles. Because she's being evasive. She was asked a direct question. It didn't matter whether she was going to the club last night or two years ago. At some point, she's already acknowledged that she was on the receiving end of pretty privilege and knows that it, wouldn't, it wasn't fair that she got into a club based on her looks while her ugly friend next to her couldn't get in because of her looks. Now, we know damn well if this happens, a lot of the times y'all not going to turn around and be like, well, we're not going to go in. And I've seen it happen. Shit, I done, I've been a DJ. I spent enough times in the clubs to see when that happens. And I've seen when the pretty girl in the group gets in and the other girls can't, her walk in and leave them standing outside there waiting in line till when they can get in. Because sometimes these women will get in VIP or leave them all together. And then they have to go somewhere else without the friend. But, you know, we, we don't know anything. Let's continue. Fair use. Fair use. I just don't go to clubs that often. But that's not the point. I asked you, how many times have you gone to a club where you got in a free where ugly chicks or less attractive chicks had to pay? And you know that's happened. You didn't say, I'm still, excuse me, sir. Uh, even though I'm attractive, I demand that you charge me full price. That's fair, right? Okay, so because I fair? Fair? into places and get that fair, that means that I should is get that fair. Before we go, that I'll answer your question if you at least answer mine. Is that fair? Life isn't fair. Well, but... the... now do you see how she evaded the question yet again? And do you see how she specifically said? Well, it, it, is that my fault? Again, it, it benefited her, right? Oh, well, it, it, it's not my fault that they had to pay and I didn't. It's not my fault. When she should have said, no, sir, if they got to pay, I got to pay. She didn't do that. She didn't do that. Let's continue. Fair use, fair use. If that's the case, you accept it in the sexual marketplace, too. It doesn't mean I have to accept other people's bullshit. No. Well, see, the thing is, ma'am, see, what you've proven, like many feminists and many women, you're okay with the double standards that benefit you. But the ones you don't like, you just throw at the wind, you sign language, shame, insults, guilt, and the need to be right to deflect and dismiss guys who are normally intimidated by this thing. I'm not. I'm just... Kevin hit the nail on the head. The nail on the head. Do you listen? Do y'all understand how many conversations I have a week like this? In it, whether it's on a live or on video, or in a chat, or in a post. What she said is exactly what many women say. Sounds very self-serving to me, wouldn't you think? She's talking about double standards, and I hear this a lot. And I see a lot of comments on posts sometimes of women talking about, well, that's a double standard. But if, if, if us, us as men brought up a double standard, it wouldn't be acknowledged. But we have to listen and... and, and and understand and take in what you feel is a double standard, but not also realizing that you benefit from double standards as well. Let's continue. Fair use, fair use. This is challenging your position. You're okay with it not being fair when it benefits you. You're oversimplifying a very complex situation. No, it's not really complex. There are no such thing as loyal, out the concept of a loyal, Highly effective competitive alpha is a female notion. And have to continue to compete with other pretty girls because men are too simple to, to stick with one. Well, how about this? The kind of men you're talking about is simple enough to make the lights you live in, the air conditioning, all the stuff that you... Hold on, excuse me, ma'am. The simple men built the world that you use. I built my own world. So no, ma'am, you use the world we built. Do 
Do you have any idea why she's single? How combative she's being. And he's being direct. She didn't build anything. But remember, she says she's half a man. So she thinks she built her world. Let's continue. Fair use. Fair use. No, ma'am. You you use the world men built. Name me five great female inventors. I'll give you one. Madam Curie. I just, I can't believe you. So you're telling me that men and... No, ma'am. I just asked you a question. And you just, no, you go, see, you're answering questions with questions. You're well, talking I, about building. Name me five great female inventors or builders. Madam Curie. Five inventors or builders. That's a really great question. That really is. Now, do you see how evasive she's being? She has no idea. She has no idea. She hasn't spoke a fact since this started. Look at her face. Look at her body language. She really thinks she's doing something. How do women like this feel that they're going to need a man, especially an alpha man. An alpha man is not going to deal with this, not going to deal with this. And some women think her behavior is okay. That's, that's what blows my mind. You don't have to like Kevin Samuels. You don't have to like him. I don't like everything he says, but to be factual, and he's hitting the point home. This is what's out here. This is what's out here. The struggle is real, y'all. Let's continue. Fair use, fair use. Yeah, I was going to. Well, also, I don't remember the lady's name, but she, there's no, a bunch of buildings it, in it, Miami. Take it, take it, take it. Go oh, on and do it. Go on and do it. Go. Take it. She's take afraid. It. Go on and do it. Go on and get on in there, baby girl. You got it. Miami was established by a woman. Congratulations. But the Miami, the, the land was established by, but this, con this country was first landed by who? Men or women? Men. Exactly. I agree with yep. you. And see, the thing is, I've done this show about survival, and you can go back to Bear Grylls Island number two. Man, oh, you're, you can only be a feminist in a first world country. You can only be a feminist in a first world country. Now, I get a lot of slack. I get a, I get a lot of pushback if we have a conversation and, and I say, I don't support feminism. Oh man, oh man. There was one day I said that, I think I lost like 20 followers. No, I, I don't support it because it's a self-serving movement. And I've done my research. And I've done my research. It doesn't benefit all women. Especially women of color. Let's continue. Fair use, fair use. If there's a hierarchy of needs, you are correct. We right. all we don't need you. College. And we don't need you. Cool. You need us. That's great. I don't need you either. No, we need you know, we don't need you for survival. You need us for survival. Okay, so what, what I'm trying to get you to understand, ma'am, is you have a right to your opinions. Obviously, so what, I don't have a right to anything. Here. Well, no, you have a right to believe what you want, well, but the thing is you're not you're not allowed to the outcome. Well, you, you're allowed to have an opinion, just like men are allowed to have an opinion. And you don't have to compete or deal in a situation that you deem is unfair, but you can't complain about the rules that are already set. You like the rules that benefit you, getting into the club for free, but you don't like the rules that benefit men. High and value men have the leverage. All right, all right. Leverage. What I'm finding is a lot of women don't like men having the leverage. And I tell you, I have this conversation several times a week and I break it down for the ladies. You need to have leverage. And I try to show them where they have leverage 
and where they don't. And many times they come to learn they don't have any leverage. Now, some women are going to try to fight that with you, but when you look at the type of men that they have access to, then the hats come off. Then you see the leverage that they don't have because they only have access to men that they complain that they've been complaining about. The leverage isn't there. It isn't there. But they think they have leverage. And two times this week already, I showed two ladies that you don't have the leverage that you think you have. You need the leverage. It's not there. Your friends aren't going to show you that it's not there. Most of you find it out the hard way. Let's continue. Fair use, fair use. You because I'm 30 fucking one years old and I'm getting a little fed up of, of these men kind of attacking me. I do not go to clubs anymore. So please stop with well, your well, double standard bullshit. I work in a man's world and if anything, I've had to work five times as hard in this world as a man to get where I am. So well, look at, oh, hold on now. So now since you want to tell me you've had to, you, you, you're 31 years old and had to work in a man's world. That's a privilege. You, you don't, here's the man, here's the thing, ma'am. You keep, you keep, you say the problems with men. The only one that's complaining about the double standard harshly is you. Yes. It because benefits you too. All the benefits. We're okay. Here. Well, here's the thing, ma'am. If you don't like, okay, ma'am, you're a competent woman, correct? Okay, so I should quit my job and never. No, you should build. You should build. You should build Amazonia. And make. <laughs> he said she should build Amazonia. She should benefit the world that she wants to live in, and get all the benefits. And men have nothing. Look at her body language. Look at her body language. Do you hear how self-absorbed she sounds? How self-centered she sounds? She said, remember, remember what I told you guys to pay attention to in the beginning when she says, I am half a man. If she's half a man, then she should be okay with, with, with being in the man's world and working in the man's world, right? She should be all right with that. But she's not. She's unhappy. She's miserable. Men aren't walking around complaining about double standards. Men aren't walking around as a whole complaining about things that are not fair to them, that are fair to women, that are fair to, that they're benefiting from that we're not. There's not a lot of us doing that. There's some there's some dudes that are doing it. But in general, they're not. But every day, every single day, I can go online and see a woman complain about what's a double standard, what's unfair. See it all day. But let's continue. Fair use, fair use. Make it the and make it the female utopia that benefits women. I probably should after listening. Well, then go ahead. Agree with you. And then you, but then, but see, then you'd have to actually build because something. You put I your, you'd have to put your cool. mouth where you, you'd have to put your bra on where your mouth is. I, I don't understand what you're saying again. I'm like, saying that you came at me with the same line. I've had to put up at 31 years old and deal with men's bullshit. You're living in a first I, world country. I, you're I, in I, Miami, one of the most posh places on the planet, complaining about double standards that you participate in. The I corrected you that I don't go to clubs, so you're okay, ma'am. I just gave an example. You've Hi. been to clubs. I didn't say you continue to go. That's not the point, now, is it? But let me. <laughs> I cut it off right when he's about to really make the point. Let me go back. Fair use, fair use. See, that's another way of you trying to get me online and then correcting me because I'm a dumb man. I get the point. No, you're. I mean, you're very rude and very. Very no, I'm very direct. And when you were doing this to the men, you had no problem showing your dick. Oh, did you hear that? Did you hear it? Now, 
this is where I'm saying you got to go back and watch this video in full. Before, before the point that Kevin comes in, she's very aggressive. She has a very strong, aggressive attitude. Now, what some women will say is, oh, you know, you're intimidated by that. Men aren't intimidated by that. Betas might be. Betas might be. But other men are not intimidated by that. It's off-putting. It's very masculine. And even though she's an attractive woman, she's oozing masculinity. Men don't like that. And they don't have to deal with that. But see, we're expected to deal with it. That's, that's, that's the thing. Y'all can walk around here slanging your, your thing around, but then... When you interact with us, you expect us to then white glove you. If, if you're going to act like, if she's going to act like half the man that she is and talk to us like half the man that she is, then she should be prepared for the way men talk and how he's going to respond to her because she's half a man, right? And she can't handle it. And I, I get this. I get this all the time. Ladies, you can't expect men to white glove you and talk to you differently. If you're going to talk to men like men talk to men, we're not going to talk to you like you talk to each other. That's not how men talk. Again, these are things that you you complain about the double standard but then you want us to white glove you, but you want you want to be in our shoes and you want to be equal as us, but then you don't want us to treat you like the men that you want to be equal to. There's no fairness in that. Now, we don't complain about it. We just play your game. We don't complain about it. But let's continue. Fair use, fair use. I'm just I'm just acknowledging why? your balls. Why? You're a tough woman. Why? Why should I? Why? Be... Because I'm just giving what you give. I I'm reflecting back what you give to people. But see, the thing is, you're okay giving this to people. Okay. I'm just okay. challenging what you think. The, these were my opinions when I came in here. I'm the one that presented these opinions. I just listened to you for two nights say these things, and I'm just talking to you one on one. And you're not backing down. I'm just I'm, I'm just challenging what you say, man. To a bunch of weak ass men tell me that I'm not attractive and I'm not this and I'm not that because I am not gonna back down and listen to somebody. Bunch, okay, are you saying the men in the room with you are a bunch of weak ass men? If you think that I should have to accept less than No, ma'am, I don't think you should have to do anything you don't want to. You're, a, you're a free person. But I'm trying to understand who are the weak ass men you're referring to. <laughs> listen, there's a lot of this. Now what she did was, is she went into sign language. Sign language is shame, insult, guilt, and the need to be right. Okay. See, no one's told her what she has to accept. No one told her that. And again, this is why I struggle with, with the feminine movement because the feminist movement have, have told you ladies that you can have everything and you can't have everything. Hell, as men, we can't have everything. And, and you can't either and you think you can. And what she's upset about is the fact that these, these have been the rules. These have been the rules. You, you can't be upset about the double standard when you benefit from it but then be visceral in your reaction to the things that you can't benefit from in the game. Then the rules. You're either going to adapt or die, compete or die. Let's continue. Fair use, fair use. Amazonia, because... Who are the, who are the weak ass men you're referring to? Who are the weak ass men you're referring to? What did I just say? Do I, I need didn't to hear you because you because okay. you kind of start talking over me? So could you repeat it? A bunch of weak ass men doing what? Yes. When somebody sits here and tells me I need to accept an unfair situation, that if we applied it to anything else in life other than men and women, wouldn't be accepted. 
by everybody in this room, but you're going to tell me that I'm going to tell you that's bullshit. And that's okay. not fair. Okay. Can I, is it my, is oh, can, I, can I give a response? There's a million issues in our culture and society today that people are fighting for fairness, but yet I'm sitting here sitting saying, Hey, I'm allowed to expect it too. And I'm going to be attacked and told. Okay. To okay. Can I respond now? My question is, is who told her she had to accept less than what she wanted? It's not, it's not about us as men telling you ladies, well, you have to accept less. What we're saying is, is you, you do have to accept reality. I'm not saying less, but you gotta accept reality. And what reality is, because we got to accept reality. We don't get a reality pass. So you don't either, because we all have to live in reality. Whether it's a pleasant one or not, whether it benefits us or not, we all got to live in it. And what's happening right now is men are coming out and finally saying, this is the reality. You don't have to do the guesswork anymore. See, y'all used to have to do the guesswork. You used to have to wonder why men act the way they act and do the way they, they do and refuse to study us. But now men are coming out and saying, yo, this is the deal. This is the game. You either like it or you don't. You don't have to take that. You ain't got to take it. You don't have to accept or take that a man wants to date a younger woman based on whatever his reasons. You don't got to accept it. You don't got to deal with it. But it's still going to happen whether you accept it or deal with it or not. Whether you like it, whether you're upset about it or not, it's still going to happen. It's still not going to change a man's desire just because you ain't with it. Anyway, let's continue. Fair use. Fair use. Different. Okay, no. Let me tell you something. First of all, men don't worry about fair. The sexual marketplace is not fair. All is fair in love and war. It's not fair. There are guys that's out there that you wouldn't give the time of day who could have a heart of gold because they don't hit your marker. Oh. Oh. The sexual marketplace is not fair. Ladies, 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 listen. Us as men have known this forever. We've known this forever. And this this is honestly everything, the big picture of what I'm painting and everything that I'm talking about is about the sexual marketplace. It isn't fair. It hasn't been fair to women. You see, well, let's, let's go through it though. Let's go through it right quick, all right? Let's go through it. You know what it isn't fair? It isn't fair that women there are a lot of women that prefer to only date a man that's six feet tall, right? It isn't fair. Now, you're going to have some guys, oh, that pisses them off. They don't like the fact that it isn't fair, and they're insecure about it. Personally, I don't care. I don't care. That's just making it easier for me to weed out the ones that are not for me. If you don't like the fact that I'm six feet tall, okay, that's your preference. That doesn't make me any less of a man. That's not going to make me think any less of myself. That isn't going to get me in my feelings because you don't like me because I'm not tall enough. I don't care. And I move on with my life. But where women, where you guys are really struggling is the fact that, that men don't want older women. Men don't want women with children. And when, men don't want bigger women. These three things you guys struggle with and fight off the most. And these things are part of a person when you're looking at them in the sexual marketplace. When, when you're coming up with your sec sexual market value. These things put you in the minus. Now, I have a, a sexual market value quiz that I like to give out to people. It's very chilling. I think it's great. And let me tell you something. You know what ain't fair? 
the guy made the, the test. There's one for men and one for women. But you know what isn't fair? And this was made by a dude that the very first question on the test is about height. And if you're shorter than six feet tall, you start off negative. You don't even start off positive as a positive score. You start off negative just because you're not six feet tall. Now, should I go run in the corner and cry about that? No, no. You know why? Because I made up, I make up for it in other places. My score rebounded because I made up for it with other attributes about myself. Women don't look at it this way. And every woman that, that I've had take the test have come back and have only focused on the negatives of the test and what put them <laughs> in the negative or what took away from their score in, in, instead of anything positive. And the thing is, is men haven't changed over the years. This is the way men have been forever. You're just now hearing more about it because men are becoming more comfortable to speak on it. But let's continue. Fair use, fair use. Oh, no, ma'am, I'll let you speak. You don't know that. No, I know that you don't give every man a chance is what I do know. You don't. Well, actually, you don't know that at all. Okay, you give. Okay, are you saying that you are the one female on the planet that will give every man who wanted you a shot? No, I am not. Okay, then I can assume that that was well, correct. Well, Let's well, move on. Well, Let's not get lost in... Okay, that's a deflection. Let's not get lost in that. Not a and you're talking about unfairness. Unfairness. Where in the world is it fair like you need it to be? Is it fair for you here in America? No, no, ma'am. I ask you, where in the world is it fair like... I'm not complaining about it. All right, all right, all right. Now, this, this right here, this is where she got out of line. This is where she really, really, really got out of line and out of pocket. He's better than I would, because I would have let her have it at that point. Okay. She is a white woman in America. She knows she has privilege and power. Even as a woman over black people and she has the nerve to sit up here on her high horse and cry about fairness and then you want to bring race into it and talk about fairness when black people everything we know about fairness is about how unfair things have been for black people in this country. This is the self-serving, self-centered, self-absorbed, damn near, I ain't even gonna say damn near, just pure narcissism that you see a lot more men commenting about when it comes to women. Now, I, I wrote an article on my website, go check it out at deeperone.com, about the rise of female narcissism. This is it right here, y'all. This. This is it. This is it here. And this is what men are talking about. This is this is kind of crap we deal with. This is where we're going through. Let's continue. Fair use, fair use. I'm not, I'm not, I, I deal with it. Mm -hmm. I deal with the unfairness and overcome it because I'm a man and I can deal with it. And I'm asking you, where is this place? Where is where is this ideal place? Where's the ideal model? It doesn't exist. Exactly. There are three women here sitting like here, never wanting to go on a date again. <laughs> well, now do you hear what she said? Now I feel like I feel like she was looking for some pity here, but he was correct. We deal with it. We deal with a lot of things that we don't talk about or we don't mention. We deal and we push on. Now she's talking about she feel like she'll never date again. Oh, she'll date again. She she may have a difficult time finding what she wants just because of her attitude. And I talk about polarity and I talk about how alpha men want 
soft, feminine, submissive women because of the polarity. Alpha, see, some alpha females think she deserves an alpha man. And what she doesn't understand is alpha men and alpha females, that's a tough relationship to have because you're always going to be fighting for power, fighting for supremacy. That's what being an alpha is. There's no way an alpha man's gonna deal with that. She needs a beta man, but I bet you believe the same. That's not what she wants. But that's what that would. That's what would compliment her. A man that's gonna let her run over her, over him. A man that's not gonna challenge her like Kevin is challenging her right now. She's not gonna want that kind of man. I, I'm. I guarantee she doesn't want that kind of man. What she wants is a man to bend the way she needs him to bend so she can get what she wants. It doesn't even matter what we want. I had a young lady admit that the other day on a live saying, I wanted what I wanted and I tried to push him and direct him and what I wanted and I didn't care about what he wanted. And that's why the relationship was bad and it ended. There's a lot of this happening. And this right here is a prime example. Let's continue. Fair use, fair use. I don't know, how about not wanting to go on a date? What's happened in this world more than anything else is mankind has learned how to get along with each other since recorded history. But along and around the 60s, when the National Organization for Women, the ERA, Phyllis, not Phyllis Schlafly, she was on our side. When all of this stuff came in, feminism, second wave, feminism, I'm a feminist. I believe in feminism. Feminism is about choice. Not, yeah, no, you really are. Excuse me, ma'am. Feminism in its true form is about choice. I don't even want to hear it. Yeah, we don't this have a choice simple. right now with what's no, going on. you have a choice. She just How exercised one right now. It got too hot. She left. Now, now, you see that? You see how she got up and she left. Now, like I said, I, I, I don't. I don't agree with everything he says. I don't agree. I just don't agree with everything he says. I'm not a feminist. I, I don't believe as a man you should ever say you're a feminist. I, I, I just don't support it. Okay. I support equal opportunity for everyone. That's where, it, that's where it stops for me. Now, the three of them are sitting there acting like they don't have a choice. Okay, She had a choice to get up. And so she got up because she couldn't take the heat. They had a choice to be there. They have a choice to get up. They had a choice to speak. They had a choice not to speak. This is toxic. It's toxic. Let's continue. Fair use, fair use. Shit shouldn't be fair. Mm -hmm. See, it's about choice. If a woman wanted to be a housewife, she could do it. If she wanted to be a business person, she could do it. See, the choice was about all black people wanted was a choice, freedom, to be have an equal shot, not equal outcomes. Men accept these things. You don't hear men complaining about fair. If Donovan and I were playing a game of football or video game, if he was kicking my fucking ass, I would be a punk to sit up and say, it's not fair, my controller's not working, the game is rigged, that's not fair, you're better, do you know? I would have to just take my ass whooping, take my L's and get better. That's what men oh, do. That you That's what men do. We don't have any other choice but to do that. We don't have a choice. If we don't, we fail. We don't have a choice. Since we're talking about choices, we don't have a choice. Let's continue. Fair use, fair use. You guys choose to be this way, and we like we don't want to choose to be that way. We want to be different. We want we don't want somebody that's gonna cheat. We don't want anybody like we want someone that's that's gonna be faithful. Why do we have to settle for these types of things that you're saying? Well, like first of all, you don't have to settle for anything. You don't have to do anything you don't want to. But what also does not have to happen is men don't have to be counter to their nature to make you happy. And that's okay. 
So what's the issue? The issue is that men are not the ones complaining about the state of relationships and dating as much as women are. Women. That's the issue. We're not complaining. Sometimes we're going to talk about fe female nature. Sometimes we have talked about fe female nature. Some of your incels complain about female nature. All, all we have done and all we're continuing to do is to adapt. We're just adapting. But what we're doing, what we're not doing anymore, is we're not, we're not bending anymore. We're not being made to feel that our refusal to bend and us wanting what we want is not a bad thing, like we've been taught for so long. And there seems to be major issue with that. Let's continue. Fair use. Fair use. Women wanted freedom of choice. Women wanted to be able to have sex with who they wanted to, marry who they want to, love who they want to, work where they want to, not work where they want to, go every place that men could go. You are the most free, most liberated group of women that ever existed on the human history, and yet you're the most unhappy. One in four out of you are on some sort of psych meds. Women are, the marital rate is dropping with modern women. What else do you want men to do? We've civilized the world in general. We don't even have wars. You can do whatever you want to. And you're still not happy with the world that men built, telling us that we're not good enough because we don't move like women. We're not going to. I <laughs> now, y'all see how she came back with the white claw. You see, they've been drinking. All right. I need to do one of these panels where we need to get together and drink and have conversations. But he's made a point. He's made a very big point. You pretty much can do whatever you want to do. See who, whoever you want to see. You're the most free society of women ever. And what men are saying is, hey, 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 hey. We, we have every right to be as discerning as you do. We have a right to say, you know what? No, nope, I'm not going to date you. Because you weigh more than me. I'm not going to date you because you have kids. I'm not going to date you because you're 42 years old. In the same ways that you say you're not going to date us because we're not six feet tall. And the way you're not, or the same ways you say you're not going to date us because we're not making this amount of money a year, or we have this many baby mamas, or we have this many kids. We can be just as discerning as you are. Now understand, y'all only discerning in those things. You're not as discerning who you end up picking, which that's a completely different um, broadcast that we, we can, in conversation we can have. But just because we have things that would disqualify you, that doesn't necessarily make it a double standard. And one of the most, the biggest points that he made was, you're trying to teach us and force us to be women, and we're not women. We don't behave like women. We don't think like women. We don't make choices like women. Let's continue. Fair use, fair use. I just feel like you guys don't put in effort i feel like the most most of you are you are serious i do feel like you're serious that i don't put in effort i mean the way that you're talking it doesn't seem like it like oh but she's right in a, in a sense because oh, wow. just what you guys are saying most guys today that's 80 percent of guys that you, you guys are that, used to it so you guys there's, just don't used, there's more used there's more what? guys on, used to what and not putting in effort. You oh, guys are so oh, used to women no. just falling at your oh, lap. oh so i was born do. this way is it's that because it? all right let me let me hit that one we're used to women falling in our laps. Listen, I may be cute on a good day, right? Today is probably not one of the best ones, but you know, I can clean up. I ain't never had no women falling in my lap. Now I've never had an issue getting women, 
but they ain't, they ain't been falling in my lap. They're not. They haven't just been dropping out the sky, landing on me, like like she likes to claim. And she talks about how men don't put in effort. I could say maybe that's fifty percent true. Because I can say that because now the men are realizing that what am I putting effort into? What am I what is my rate of return for the amount of effort that I'm putting into? What am I getting? Some men aren't gonna put effort into what's available out here. You 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 shouldn't expect that. Some men are going to put in effort. This girl in the middle, her name is Amanda, the one that got up, the one that he's been talking to. Who's going to put in effort to date that? She seems unpleasant all around. She doesn't seem like a very positive energy source at all. Who's going to put in effort to angry women and you can tell they're angry and listen I love women but I, I come in contact with angry women at least once a day on my Instagram at least I see angry women all on my timeline all day who is going to put effort into that and it, it's not our job as men to make you unangry because you are angry because another man made you angry it's not my it's not my job to undo that So yeah, some, some dudes aren't going to put in effort. And if you don't require things, of course men aren't going to put in effort. But some of you out here are trying to require things from men that aren't capable because you're settling for men, which you chose to because nobody forced you to. And you're settling for men that ain't putting in effort. That's not my fault. I put in effort for, for what I value and what I believe I, I want. That's <laughs> if you choose somebody that, that is not putting in effort, it's probably for a reason. And one of them, most likely, is you're choosing the wrong one. Let's continue. Fair use, fair use. Does a twenty-three-year-olds matter? And not you know what? But the guys, let's let's not get lost in this because when they can get into VIP by just being the hottest woman in the club, that's okay. Why is that your only argument? Yeah, and because it's the one that everybody understands. Because it's the one that everyone understands. Everybody, and I could use this. more. Trust me, I'm a smart guy. I can give you more. But the point of the I matter is, it's the one we understand, and the double standard benefits you. You're okay with. What effort are women putting in today? Women still want men to move in a traditional way, but yet you're not traditional women. Boy, listen. I say this all the time. You expect men to move in a traditional way for untraditional women untraditional situations no one ever talks about how to move in untraditional situations you can't have the same expectation of a man to come in and take care of you when you already have a family You didn't earn that. You didn't earn that right for a man to want to, to come in, take care of you and the child that he had, that you had with another man. And then another child that you may produce together. That's an untraditional situation. You got to work, baby. As you have been working as a single mother, you're still going to have to work. It is unfair to request men to be traditional in untraditional situations with untraditional women. And this is the biggest expectation that women have today. And you're finding out that there are men that just are not going to do it and they shouldn't be expected to do it. And it doesn't make them any less of a man if they don't. 
It's unfair. You want to talk about fairness? It's unfair. And what you guys are figuring out is that men have figured out that that's unfair to them. Men have figured out that that is not a good deal. Hell, I've, I've played the stepdad role four times over. And I've learned every time that it is not a good deal. And the thing is, is, is where he said, what effort are y'all putting in? That's a good question. What effort are you putting in? Many of you aren't putting in any effort at all. Many, do you know how many women that, that I come in contact with that they, they don't even want to take care of themselves as single? They don't want to get up and put makeup on their face every day to look good and feel good, good about themselves. They don't want to eat right. They don't want to get in the gym. And that's just them being single, doing it for themselves. They don't want to do that. I know women that don't want to do any of those things. And, and a lot of it's generally because they're tired, they're raising kids by themselves. How do you expect a man to want to sign up for that? Your life situation got nothing to do with that new man. Your choice to have multiple kids has nothing to do with that new man. And you want him to put in effort to get minimal effort from you? Minimal effort put into yourself, let alone the zero effort that you would put in to trying to be with him? Because you, you're sitting there saying you're the prize and he should be um, worthy to have and lucky to have you when you're not showing him what you bring to the table to benefit him when you getting with when it, with him getting with with you benefits you more than it benefits him that's the expectation that a lot of y'all have out here let's continue fair use fair use I don't even know Is there what a crickets say. button? I, I'm confused. I'm asking men to act in a traditional way. Yes, yeah, so you want men to be traditional. I mean, most I'm, women. I'm, okay, I run a show that has anywhere from fifteen to twenty thousand people watching every night. And I'm, women from women around the world consistently say they want a man that's earning in the high five, low six figures. They want to have two to three kids and be married. Most women want the top ten percent of men. You can go watch my channel and see this bared out. Black, white, Asian, Hispanic, Middle Eastern, and other across the board. All these women are given an option. Do you want to have to work to pay significant bills after you're pregnant? The answer comes back overwhelmingly no, meaning they want to be traditional stay-at-home housewives. They weren't raised that way. They weren't cultured that way. They're not even equipped to be that way. But yet, they. and if you ask them, could you date an average guy earning $50,000? Even women coming straight out of college turn their nose up. Men I, accept yeah. this. Excuse me, ma'am. Men I, accept I, it. Can, can I finish my example? Today yeah, you said God. he's making eighty thousand dollars, and that wasn't enough. Okay, so men accept this. Men well, accept. Right, men accept the fact that college men accept the fact that they're in school right now with women their own age. That eighty years ago they could have married and had a family early on. Remember when I said, I don't just got to tell you, I can show you? He's right. I listen to his show. I've listened to the majority of his shows. And what he said is exactly true. And on any given show, what he says is what you hear women call in and say. So again, double standard. Fair. Let's continue. Fair use, fair use. Now they're looking at these same women and these same women would not even look at these guys unless they're making six figures. Men have accepted the unfairness in the marketplace. It's not fair for men. 18 to 30, men used to could get married. Now you can't even really consider getting married till you're 35 plus because you have to have resources. That's the new marketplace. The well, thing is, but can, let me finish. Let me say this and I'll, let, I'll, I'll turn it over. Men have accepted that and adjusted. The difference is the women are not bringing in, women in mass are bringing this. 
Ask them what you want, you get war and peace. Ask you what you bring to the table, you can't write it on the back of a stamp. You get access to my body, which is not virgin, which is not even low miles, which you've given to somebody before. And in some cases, you've even shared your womb. You're not even really feminine like women used to be. You don't even have the domestic skills, the home skills. So is it a, I would, so I would submit today that modern women are asking for an unfair deal from modern men. And that's it. He said, he said it all. He said it all. We don't need, we don't even need to watch anymore. He said it all. Y'all are asking for an unfair deal. You heard what he said. What, this is why the question of what you bring to the table. This is why I ask women and I'm telling you, I'm telling you what he said. Tell, if you ask women what they want, they'll write war and peace. But if you ask them what they bring to the table, they can barely fit in on a stamp. And best believe, no matter how much you didn't like that statement that he said, and you don't like the one that I'm making, come on a live, come on a show, and listen when I ask women this. And let me tell you, I have asked this question several times. Several, several, at least 20, 30 women have have heard me ask this question and three were able to rattle something off at the top of their head. Three crickets from everybody else. I had one do it after, after the show ended and, and slid into my DMs and told me. Three. And again, y'all are talking about we're not putting in any effort. And I, I keep using the example of a picnic. All right. The man is the table. Let's just 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 be honest. The man is the table. Y'all need to accept that. The man is the table, and 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 ladies, you gotta bring something to it. I'm gonna put it like this. If we're at a picnic, a cookout, right? And I tell you, all right, there's three of you, okay? And I say, all right, this is what I need on my table. This is what I need you to bring to this table. I need you to bring ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, buns, and a case of beer. Okay? Now there's three of you. One of you shows up with everything. The next one shows up with half. The third one shows up with two things plus ranch, blue cheese, white bread, and wine. Who do you think he's going to go with? Just who? He's not going to go with the last one. And the reason he's not going to go with the last one, because that, sh that showed him that not only could you not follow directions and that you didn't have everything that he asked for, is that you then added things to the list that you thought he needed, even though he gave you specific instructions to bring what was actually on the list so that that's going to be a no because we see that type of woman is problematic the next one now the next one brings half now we might fuck with her depending on why she only brought half maybe we hear her reasoning behind it you know we might keep her around to see if she has potential to bring more some dudes might keep her as a side chick. Some dude might make her an FWB. But the one that wins is the one that brought everything that he asked for. That's the one that wins. That, that, that's showing you that A, she can follow directions, and B, she's cooperative. She brought exactly what he asked for. The second girl didn't put in much effort because she brought half. The third only cared about it a couple of things to bring, but then brought everything else. And this is how women think. When I ask this question, do you know what the kind of man you want wants in a woman? I haven't had a woman that I've asked this question answer it correctly yet, let alone at all. Or able to. 
That's bad, ladies. That's bad. That goes to show that you are dating wrong. That goes to show that it's not the, all these men's fault that you're you're single and that you keep running into bad relationships. You have no idea what men like. You have no idea what men want. And some of you, you don't know it, let alone care. And for the life of you, you can't understand why you can't find a good man. Baby, it starts with you. You're the reason. Now, I know that's going to be hard for a lot of ladies to hear, but, you know, you've spent too much time listening to your grandma, listening to your mom and your auntie, whoever, you know, give you, and they're all single, by the way, give you dating advice that have not worked for you. And you refuse to listen to men, and that's clearly obvious with how your dating experience has gone. That. That is the point of all of this. And what I'm trying to help you as women understand that if y'all don't get it together, if y'all don't get to the point where you really take a moment to listen to what men are saying and not be offer your quick rebuttals because you're in your feelings or being quick defense because you're in your feelings, you're going to be alone. And if you don't watch Kevin Samuel's show, you need to go watch and you need to hear women talking about their fear of being alone because they're not having, they're not making good male decisions because they don't know anything about men. And they act like this girl Amanda here on the show. That ain't the wave, ladies. That's not going to get you the man that you want. I'm just here to help y'all. I'm here, I'm here to help y'all get it together. Because, because. I'm running into too many people that's coming on my show and then you find out that they have unhealed trauma. They've got, some of them have very, very questionable trauma that have never been touched. And you can easily figure out that they're the reason they're not having successful relationships because they have untreated issues going on that they're never going to have a successful one until they're tackled now if this is you let this let this video be a wake-up call for you let it be a wake-up call but it's time for a change it's time for a change ladies well that concludes the show i didn't think i was gonna let the show go this long but you know it is what it is all right we're at episode 20 of the show and this is my first video show where I'm going to rip the audio and add it to my podcast. But this is going up on YouTube. Going up on YouTube soon. So thank y'all for participating, watching the show. I really appreciate you. For content, for everything that is Deeper One, you can go to my website and find it at deeperone.com. That's D-E-E-P, the number three, R-1.com. You go there. Check out the blog, listen and subscribe to the podcast, and also you can watch my YouTube videos there as well. If you need a consultation, if you need some help maneuvering the sexual marketplace, maneuvering men, understanding men, go onto my website, click the upper right of the page. There's a button that says book a discovery session. Please click it. A discovery session is just a free consult to just have a sit down and see what it is that I, as a certified master life coach, can help you with, help you move past, or help you maneuver for that best life. That's what I'm here for. So if you are ready for that, please. Please, please come through and support your boy. This is Deeper One, and this is the End Too Deep Show for Dead Ass. Come on through and enjoy the show. Thank you for listening to the End Too Deep Show with your host, Deeper One.